This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Pet Greens is proud to support Nine Lives with Dr. Cat on Pet Life Radio. Hey there, cat lovers. Welcome to Nine Lives with Dr. Cat. I'm your host, Dr. Catherine Prim, and I am a small animal veterinarian and crazy cat lover. So today, I have Dr. Tracy Dice with me, and she's a veterinarian, obviously, and she and I are going to discuss something that is often missed by our cat-owning listeners, their cat's pain. So we're going to talk about pain in cats, how to recognize it, and what you should do about it. And we'll be right back. Hey there, cat lovers. It's Dr. Cat from Nine Lives with Dr. Cat. You know the expression, cats have nine lives. Well, what if you can give them one more? The Give Them Ten movement is on a mission to help give cats an extra life. How? With spay and neuter. Spaying or neutering your cat helps them live a longer, healthier life, and it helps control free-roaming cat populations, too. Learn more about the benefits of spay and neuter and meet Scooter, the neutered cat, at GiveThem10.org. That's GiveThem10.org. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Nine Lives with Dr. Cat on Pet Life Radio. So I have Dr. Tracy Dice with me today. Hello. Hello, Dr. Cat. How are you? I am excellent. Perfect, if you will. Mm-hmm. And I am very excited to talk with you today because we're focusing on a topic that a lot of cat owners really are not aware of, specifically arthritis pain in cats. So can you start by telling us a little bit about what arthritis is? Absolutely. So osteoarthritis or arthritis or another acronym we hear sometimes is DJD, probably familiar with those terms in the human world. But what it is, is it's a degenerative condition where the cartilage, which is that structure, the structures that overlie our bones and, and help lubricate joints, that structure starts breaking down and degenerating. We have inflammation in the joints. Space. And that degeneration, well, one, it's, it's lifelong and it's progressive, but it also can create a lot of discomfort. It can affect our feline friends, quality of life, and just overall cause significant changes to their, their mobility. So I hear a lot in my exam room and with my clients that they are worried about whether or not their pet is in pain. So that is why I thought this was a really important episode to have and discussion to have. So can you speak on the statistics maybe? Like how many cats do you think actually suffer from pain and and why would we not know it? Yeah, great, great question, Dr. Cat. And I, I think, I think you, I think our audience, I think they're going to be so surprised at these stats. I know I was as a practicing vet and as a medically covering feline pain. 40% of cats have osteoarthritis, suffer from the pain of osteoarthritis. And let's unpack the ages because I know for me, my brain just historically, see what I did there? It tends to go to things like osteoarthritis and degeneration being an old, an old cat disease. But would you believe that like 61% of cats as young as six can suffer from osteoarthritis and about 90% of cats over 12 have radiographic changes of osteoarthritis, but it can be seen in cats even as as young as two. So osteoarthritis, it's an equal opportunity offender. So it's so important that knowing those stats, 
knowing that it can affect youngs and old, it, it's so important that we know what to look for. So hopefully we can get in and do some early intervention. Well, I know I don't think of myself as old, but I know when I was really young, I already suffered from some knee pain and it it kind of came from my days in my youth where I rode horses and I had accidents. And so I think that maybe our younger cats, maybe they were found as strays and we don't know what they were doing and maybe they sustained some injury that we just don't know about. Would you agree with that? I would 200%. If it, can I do 200%? Can it be over 100? I would, uh, I would completely agree. And like you, so you experience osteoarthritis as a result of your equestrian days. I started sports at a young age, probably when I was five or six. And so I too experienced osteoarthritis and the pain at an earlier age than most. When I think about the cats that I have and I think about my patients, think about when they're young and they do crazy acrobatics. They jump from the top of the fridge down. And I just think they're agile in that moment. And just wonder, even if there's not a history of trauma that we can pinpoint, what about just general wear and tear from from their incredible acrobatics throughout their lives? Those are some pretty high velocity jumps. I agree. I feel like when when I was in vet school, and, and probably you experienced the same thing, we talked about osteoarthritis in racehorses or sporting dogs or things. And cats are three times the athlete or racehorses, in my opinion. I may not be objective. I would agree with that. And this is, this is another thing I, I love about this opportunity is getting to focus on the cat. We know cats are not small dogs. They're, they're very unique, special creatures. I like to say they're like fingerprints or snowflakes where no two are the same. And so we did that. That is the evolution of what we know about osteoarthritis. We, we studied it in the horse. We've studied it in the dog. And now we are really pausing to study it in the cat so that we can, again, screen, intervene it, and do something about it. Okay, so your puns are great because it fits right in and it's really meovulous because, and clearly you have listened to my show because you fit right in. So you said 40% of all cats. I think that's, I think that's really significant. If we lined up 10 cats in a room, that means four of them would be suffering. So do you think that that would be maybe obvious? Do you think the average onlooker would know that four of them were suffering? I don't. I don't. This is what is so tricky about cats. They're secret keepers, right? They they hide a lot of stuff from us and they have to because they're one of those species that what they hunt, but they're also hunted. So they have to keep signs of injury, signs of illness. They have to keep it to themselves. But part of that is it makes diagnosing conditions very difficult. A lot of times, by the time they show us they're not feeling well, we can be behind the eight ball. So I think unlike dogs, when we look at conditions, painful conditions like osteoarthritis, our canine patients, Dr. Cat, they tell us that they're not feeling well. Maybe it's with a limp. Maybe it's with hesitation to get up. Cats don't always do that. In addition, it's hard for us to do orthopedic exams on cats, sometimes in, in our offices. So what we have to do is we have to say, okay, cats are great secret keepers. They tell us they hurt. They, they really do. We have to learn how to speak their language so that we can understand what they are trying to tell us. And so diagnosing osteoarthritis and screening for osteoarthritis in cats might look a little bit different in dogs because we're going to really look at some key behaviors and partner with the cat caregiver on giving us information that makes us suspect and start looking for OA diagnosis. I just said a lot. I know. So let me pause. Let me pause. And, and we'll unpack it from there. Okay. You can pause. Um, well, so, so I, am I understanding what you are pointing out and trying to highlight for my listeners is that 
their cat may be acting completely normal unless they really start to drill down to some behaviors or maybe no uh, unusual behaviors at all. Is that what you're saying? That's what I am saying. I think the most common thing that we will hear from our cat caregivers is this. Everything's going well. She's just slowing down. And slowing down, for me, it's like either my my dog's hearing a chip bag open or my cat's hearing a churu unpack it. The ears need to perk up because cats really shouldn't be just slowing down. Should they? Historically, when they're slowing down, there's a reason. And then we get to get to that reason. And so it's not just getting old because I've heard that a lot. She's just getting old, but it's not. So I'm glad that you pointed that out. Yeah, for sure. I bet. I bet. And I don't know. Something tells me you and I maybe have been in practice for around the same amount of time, but it was just drilled into us. Age is not a disease. Age is not a disease. The slowing down, age is not a disease. There is a disease causing the slowing down. And osteoarthritis is is a disease. It's a failure in a major organ system. That organ system is the joint. And it matters because it's a quality of life issue. And like I said, I hear a lot in my exam room, especially, you know, in some end of life consultations and stuff, doc, is she in pain? And, and I have to say, yeah. And, and that makes a difference. So I think that we need to talk about more, uh, more ways for my listeners to really start looking at their cat and asking that question. Can you maybe tell us some checklist or criteria or something that my listeners could use? Absolutely. So folks at Zoetis who have an investment in cats and so happy that they do, they have worked with some cat enthusiasts, some specialists in the area, and have put together a, a checklist. We call it the, the Cat OA checklist. And what this checklist looks at are six behaviors that we know if these six behaviors are off in our cats, there is a high correlation, a high probability that they have osteoarthritis pain. So um, we'll run through the six, but for anyone listening, you can go to Cat O A checklist. That's going to be C A T, not like K A T, like Dr. Cat. Cat O A checklist. But the behaviors are this are, are there, is there difficulty jumping up or jumping down? And you know, Dr. Cat, when we're talking to our cat caregivers, we want to say, like, okay, if we say, is there a problem jumping up or down? They might want to say, yes or no. But what we want to get at is how are they doing those behaviors? Are they landing that jump? Is there a hesitation? Are they noticing claw marks where their cat is actually pulling themselves up onto a surface? So jumping up, jumping down. How we climb stairs. Think about a cat or a kitten that just barrels up the stairs up and down the stairs. They don't think twice about it. And then think about our maybe middle-aged or senior cats. Maybe there's hesitation. Maybe they have the little bunny hop. Maybe they have to stop halfway and take a little rest. And then the final, the final group that we look at is how do they chase moving objects and how are they running? What I love about the Cat OA checklist is it doesn't just talk about the behaviors. They are little animations that show you what good looks like and what not so good looks like. So our cat caregivers can literally push the animation and watch their cat and then make a decision whether that behavior is normal or abnormal in their cat. I love it. I've learned over the years that it depends on how I ask the question. So, you know, is she doing okay? If you just say, is she doing okay? They're going to say yes. But then you can say, well, does she still do the things she used to like to do? Maybe sitting in the window. Well, you know, she kind of stopped sitting in the window and started sleeping in the closet. I mean, you know, it's just, it's all about the questions that you ask where you find out more about that. So this checklist sounds like a really, really good thing. You said you could find it where? 
if you or the listeners, if they will type in catoachecklist.com, it will come up. That's great. So I want to take a quick break and come back and talk about what do you do about it? I mean, we can't just know about it and not fix it. So let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Our small family farm produces live organic cat grass, catnip, and soft chew treats packed with green nutrition to help your pets truly thrive inside. We're partnering with pioneer cat behavior expert and best-selling author Pam Johnson Bennett to help indoor cats live their best lives with indoor enrichment tips for their parents. Anyone who knows me knows I am a very strong proponent for cats being indoors. But when we bring cats indoors, where I feel it's safest, we have an obligation to make sure they have a fulfilling life, that they get enrichment. And part of that enrichment is encouraging health. And a big part of that health is cat grass. Cat grass helps with the prevention of hairballs. It can help keep your cat away from house plants. It's also fun for your cat. It's a natural behavior that your cat wants to chew, and you know that you're providing it in a safe way. For more information on the benefits of cat grass and catnip for your cat's indoor enrichment, visit PetGreens.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Nine Lives with Dr. Cat on Pet Life Radio. So we're talking about a feline osteoarthritis, cat OA, and the impacts that it can have on your cat's quality of life. And so I know that you know that there have been limitations to the ways to treat arthritis pain in cats. So, you know, if my knee hurts, I can go take an Advil or whatever, but it's not that simple for cats, is it? It's not that simple. It is, but it isn't because the principles are very similar. It's just maybe the the therapeutics might be a little different. So can we talk just just very briefly about medications, human medications and their lack of usefulness in the feline species? Yeah. And I think we even have to say it's not that it's just lack of usefulness. It's that it can actually be harmful or dangerous to them. So to your point, Dr. Cat, you and I were having a bad OA day. We have a cornucopia of anti-inflammatories that we can choose from. Because cats are unique in the way they process medications, not that easy for them. And so in the United States, we don't really have an anti-inflammatory that is approved safe for chronic use for that inflammation. And so for a while, we had to get pretty creative, didn't we? Like we had to try everything but the kitchen sink. Yes. the, The exciting thing now is that we do have a solution, FDA approved medication, for the management of osteoarthritis pain in cats. And I'm like, it's a great year to be a cat. And I also want to say, finally, finally, (laughs) we have something to help them with their osteoarthritis pain. Okay, I do want to take a quick moment to reach out to the listeners that may be at home looking at their cornucopia of medications that they might use to treat their own arthritis pain and recognize if you do not already know this, those things are really not healthy for cats. They are toxic in some cases. Specifically, Tylenol is very, very toxic to cats. So I just want to throw that in there because that is really important. I don't want to disrupt your train of thought, but I just wanted to throw that in there. I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. And I think it's important to know and for us to remember, you know, none of us would ever give anything to our cat intentional, but we want to, we notice they're struggling. We want to help. And then sometimes in trying to help, we can actually cause some harm. So I think it's brilliant to have that, that PSA about, hey, before you give anything to a cat, reach out to Dr. Cat, reach out to me, reach out to your vet to find out what is actually safe for them. 
Yes, for years and years, I had nothing to treat arthritis pain in cats Beverly. that, I, that I, I just felt like I might be doing some harm. And now there is a new option that I feel so much better about. So let's talk a little bit about the advances along that area. Absolutely. So for a long time, we didn't. So for 20 years, the way we have managed osteoarthritis in our companion animals has been the same. But in the last few years, with technology advances, we have some super cool, super cool treatment modalities that are, God, they're exciting, they're inspiring, and it's a completely different pathway than what we're acclimated to. So what I'm talking about is, um, cat, let's bring the cat out of the bag, let the cat out of the bag, is Silencia, which is Frunvetmab injectable, which is a monoclonal antibody for the control of osteoarthritis pain in cats. So it doesn't affect their kidneys. They do not need to possess the ability to break down medications like the ones we were just talking about that they can't break down, right? That's right. So monoclonal antibodies, um, I like to think of them as like natural proteins. I mean, our bodies, cats' bodies, they make antibodies naturally, right? So this is very similar. But instead of monoclonal antibodies having to be processed by the liver or excreted, let out by the kidney system, these little monoclonal antibodies, they get broken down with natural body processes, just like our naturally occurring antibodies would be broken down. And then the proteins of that antibody, is they're recycled for future use. So yeah, very different than the, the drug pathways that we think of. And um, again, exciting as they are approved safe and effective. It's great news. I have been giving it for a while. I have a lot of cats that never miss their dose. I mean, they call me back. They will not miss it. So for everybody listening, it's called Silencia. It is a monoclonal antibody. It is administered by your veterinarian only once a month, which is really great. What else is, there's more exciting stuff. Tell us more about it. So I think, and you, you just hit the nail on the head. What is Second most exciting, other than we have something to treat pain in cats, OA pain in cats, is that because it is administered by a professional in the vet's office, you know what it does? It prevents us from having to struggle at home administering oral medications to our cats. Dr. Cat, have you ever had to medicate one of your cats? for a long-term chronic condition, because let's face it, uh, osteoarthritis isn't going anywhere. Once it's there, they need to have lifelong therapy. Have you ever had to give one of your cats medications once to twice a day forever? So you know that I have, <laughs> because every veterinarian always adopts cats that need them. Uh, if you know, I mean, I, so I've had an inflammatory bowel disease, a couple of inflammatory bowel disease cats. I've had a couple of heart disease cats, um, allergic skin disease. Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> yes. And, and it is, it's frustrating, not just for us, but also for our cats, right? Because it's very disruptive to that relationship we have with them. Um, my cat, and I always say, I'm really a great pill giver to my patients. But when I try it on my own pets, like all bets are off, like all bets are off. I just turn. It's like I don't have any veterinary experience at that point. But what breaks my heart is they start associating me instead of with love and companionship. They associate me with the inflictor of the terrible, awful pill. And so it's so disruptive and, and heartbreaking to the relationships we have with our cats when we have to, to medicate them daily or multiple times a day. So I love that about Silencia because administered once a month at the veterinary office and it takes that, that burden off of me and, and lets me just keep having a relationship with my cat. That is cool. 
The other thing I like about it is we think about treatment of chronic disease. Remember we said chronic disease needs lifelong treatment. What happens when we we miss doses, like say we we miss doses of oral meds for OA pain, well, that pain waxes and wanes, doesn't it? So it's almost like our cats are on a roller coaster of pain with a one a month injectable, they're receiving more chronic coverage of that pain. So we don't have to guess if they're having a good day, bad day. We can keep them off of that roller coaster. I love that. So I have, and people listening may be like, oh, but I don't like taking my cat to the vet. So I'm going to tell a quick story about Dash because I don't have Dash's mom's permission to tell the story, but I really don't think she would mind. Dash was a very, very, very fearful cat to the point that when I lectured on Fear Free, I had pictures of Dash because he was a worst case scenario. Really? And um, we started doing, we did all the Fear Free things. And now Dash is a Silencia cat and he can, he comes in once a month, happy to see us. And my assistant gives him his Silencia by herself. So it can be done. It doesn't have to be something to dread and it's totally worth it. That's my pitch. That is your pitch. And you know what makes, when we talk about cats like Dash, it, it's a reminder. It's a reminder how chronic pain can affect other systems, right? So here's Dash and he had truly fear, anxiety, and stress with coming to the vet. But think about how if you're a cat and you're in pain from a chronic degenerative condition like osteoarthritis, all other conditions are going to be ramped up, aren't they? I know I'm very grouchy when I'm having flare days. Very, very grouchy. So it's interesting Maybe by managing Dash's away pain, maybe he was able also to to set a little bit with his with his fear and anxiety. I think so. I mean, he's just a completely different cat. So for my listeners that are looking over at their cat that used to jump up in the window and is now lying on the floor, for example, what would you say would be the first step? The first, the absolute first step would be to go to catoachecklist.com and I would do those behaviors. Don't try to cram them into one day. Do like a few. Take a few days. See how they are going up the stairs, down the stairs, if you have stairs. See how they're landing those jumps. Maybe you recall I haven't even seen them jump in, in some time period. So that would be the first thing is just Take pause to to notice those activities. And the very second thing I would do as soon as I notice those, and I know I'm going to do this in the future with my cat, I sure would would make a phone call and, and get an appointment to be seen by, by a veterinarian. Yes, I agree. Because at your veterinarian, there might be something else we need to check or we might recommend x-rays or, I mean, you know, there may be more to it. But certainly that's your first step. I agree. That okay. Is- so it's very reassuring to know that there are ways to kind of help manage this pain. But are there any things uh, that you might suggest maybe to my listeners that have kittens or younger cats? Are there any things that you might suggest starting now on them to help maybe ward this off? You know, what I think is important from the, the get-go, and this is going to be kind of encompassing. Maybe parts of it are, are unique to osteoarthritis pain. Maybe not. The first thing I, I'd like to say is for all of our little wee tot, our little mittens, or newly adopted cat, I say let's get them started on the right paw. Let's do that carrier training. Let's get them used to going for routine checkups yearly. Again, Dr. Cat, we see this all the time. They're secret keepers. And I can't stress enough how important it is that we have a touch point with our cat patients and their people yearly so we can track the progress. Are there any changes? Um, we can work together to identify things early on. 
second thing is you just do all the things that we should do for cats. Give them vertical spaces. If they cohabitate with other species, make sure they have their space that they can get away and flee. When it comes to litter pans, you know, make sure we do our due diligence, have the right number of pans, have the correct types of pans for our cat's needs. You know, as our pets are getting older and they maybe have OA pain, crawling into high walled litter pans can be problematic. Maybe we need to lower those pans. Maybe they need to be more spacious. Maybe we need to give them ramps to get to some of the the high perch areas they like. So all those things, all those things, and you know, starting with kittens and just you know adjusting as they go through all their different life stages. Okay, so I want my listeners to say, oh, Dr. Cat told me to do this, but I want all of those people with young cats and young kittens to make cat videos. Make oh. videos <laughs> of them playing. Make videos of them jumping and climbing so that when they do start to get a little older, you might say, you know, that's different. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I want you to make videos. Let's do that. I forgot to say something. So your ass is going to be to make the videos. That's your ass. I totally forgot to say this. And you know what I'm about to say. Let's keep their weight healthy if we can, because we know that increased weight can not only cause problems with osteoarthritis in the future, but other diseases as well. So let's let's try our best. And we know they beg for it. We know they ask for it. But um, let's raise our, our right paws and, and do our best at taking a pledge to keep their weight healthy. Yep. And keep them moving, like you talked about with the vertical spaces. So that's definitely something that we can do. Well, I really appreciate your time. Before I let you go, though, I want to reiterate for my listeners, how can they learn more about Silencia? What about the cat checklist and all of those things? Where, again, can you tell us? You bet. I'm going to give you two places to go, if that's okay. So our listeners can go to solencia.com. I'm going to spell it out because if I were just listening, I might not know how to spell it. S-O-L-E-N-S-I-A.com. And the, everything you want to know about osteoarthritis, pain in your cat, Silencia, the checklist is there. But if you're eager to jump into that cat checklist, you can go to cat, C-A-T-O-A, O-A, checklist.com. And it has those great animations. Well, that's, yeah, that's perfect. And me, (laughs) Alvulus. So, um, you know what? Thank you for sharing your expertise with us today. It sounds like uh, you and I have both experienced similar things along the way. And like I tell so many of my guests, we share the same mission. (laughs) We sure do. Live long and prosper to cat everywhere. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, of course, thank you to our amazing producer, our meowsing producer, Mark Winter. And thanks to my listeners for tuning in to another episode of Nine Lives with Dr. Cat. Go out and have a perfect day. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.